Question 4a. The 3D orbitals in an isolated Fe2 ion are degenerate. Degenerate means the D orbitals they are at the same energy level, something like this. So means the uh, five 3D orbitals, these five orbitals, now they are at the same energy level before the uh, complex ions form. And complete the diagram to show the splitting of 3D orbital energies level in an isolated Fe2 and when the Fe2 form octahedral complex. So means these degenerate orbitals later it will form two set of non-degenerate orbitals because the ligands form a bonding with this ion and eventually it will cause some of the uh, orbitals is move higher some of the orbitals is move lower the one that move higher is the dz square d x square y square these two orbitals and the three orbitals that the lower energy level they are dxy dxz dyz so these two sets of the uh, non-degenerate orbitals so it's just will form when the octahedral complex ions form means when there is an octahedral complex so the splitting is like this two above three below you might not really need to put the names you just need to draw the lines like this B1 by pyridine is a bidentate ligand. Explain what it means by bidentate ligand. So a species that donates two lone pairs. This is the first key. Donates two lone pairs to form dative bonds with the metal cation. So means since the these are by pyridine is a bidentate ligand therefore it must it must have a, a two donor atoms the two donor atoms they are nitrogens here this one and this one and these two nitrogen they have the lone pair one lone pair and this lone pair will donate to the metal cation to form two dative bonds so that's why we say that this is a bidentate ligand because it has the two donor atom and donates two lone pair later. Part two. So now we have a complex between the uh, the iron <coughs> three or iron two, sorry, iron two with the three bipyridine. Uh, uh, this uh, ligand so this one exists as two stereoisomers because we know that the bipyridine is the bidentate ligand so it will form uh, six dative bonds now with the iron 2 ion so we know that it's the octahedral complex because it has six coordination number and this one because uh, it has the uh, these uh, three bidentate ligand, so we know that it will form optical isomer. Uh, so you have to bear in mind when a complex ion with three bidentate ligand, for example, like this, three bidentate ligand always will form optical isomer. Optical isomer means the two isomer. It will be the mirror images and they are non superimposable means when you draw the complex then you have to draw something like this so you have to uh, because I already told you you can use this one to represent the bidentate ligand so you draw uh, this uh, 3d diagram so two which line two dotted line so after that, uh, you just draw the three bidentate ligand. Make sure you draw the mirror images 
according to this one the first one that you draw so make sure the position is followed this one followed by this one this one followed by this one this one followed by this one so therefore now they are the mirror image and these two mirror images they are non super impossible means they are not the same thing so again they are optical isomer when these two they are the mirror images they are, they are not super, non super impossible so we know that they are optical isomer Part C. Standard electropotential can be used to compare the stability of different complex ions for the given transition elements. Table 4.1 given the electrode reaction, three electrode reaction with the difference potential. Now, use the relevant data from the, this table 4.1 to state which iron 3 complex is hardest to reduce first you need to understand reduce means gain electron means which one is hardest to gain electron then we need to look at the values here the potential the one that most positive is the one that easily get electron or most likely gain, gains electron the one that less positive or lowest value so we know that this is the one that not easily gains electron or not easily get reduced so we know that this is the complex that harder to be reduced so you just put this one this complex ion right and explanation is very easy because it has a lowest e naught lowest e naught means it's less likely to gain electron and get reduced So for the part uh, D, the ligand uh, bipyridine consists of two pyridine rings. Now we have this uh, pyridine. So it's um, okay. This structure, Figure four point two, show the structure of this pyridine. And uh, same as a benzene ring, is a cyclic, uh, is a planar structure. And by reference to the hybridization of the carbon atom and nitrogen atom and the orbital overlap suggests how the sigma bond and pi bond are formed in this pyridine molecule so first you need to explain what is the hybridization of the carbons and nitrogen so how we identify that um, if let's say uh, we want to draw the this uh, the the full diagram or the this uh, displayed uh, formula, so this one we know that the carbon it can form four bondings, three sigma bond, one pi bond. Nitrogen will form two sigma bond, one pi bond. So means they they are going to have the this hybridization. So since the carbon is formed three sigma bond, so it needs to form the sp2 hybrid orbitals. And these hybrid orbitals, they're having the three unpaired electron to form three sigma bond. And the one electrons will be in the p orbital to form the pi bond. So therefore, we know that the hybridization for the carbon is sp2. For the nitrogen, because it has five electrons or five valence electron, so this is how it's arranged. Nitrogen is formed two sigma bond and one pi bond, as I told you just now. Means it's going to form sp2 hybrid orbitals, and it's just going to use the two unpaired electron in this uh, hybrid orbitals 
to form the two sigma bond. Means the nitrogens is going to have sp2 hybridization as well. And the one electron in the p orbital will form the pi bond. That's how they form the bonding. Right? So means the hybridization for the carbon and nitrogen in this pyridine is both sp2 and sp2. So second thing is how the sigma bond and the pi bonds form in this molecule. And you have to uh, know uh, what type of the this uh, bonding will form. Means between uh, which uh, atom. The carbon will form sigma bond with nitrogen. Is the end to end uh, overlap. And the carbon also can have the end to end overlap with the hydrogen. And this carbon also can have the end-to-end -end overlap with this carbon. So means the end-to-end -end or end-on-end -end, uh, these uh, overlaps is going to be between carbon and carbon, carbon and hydrogen, and uh, carbon and nitrogen. So it can happen between this atom. So means the end-on-end -end sp2 orbitals overlap will between this uh, of course uh, the cc overlap is sp2 sp2 cn overlap also sp2 sp2 ch overlap is sp2 s this is the overlap and the sigma uh, the pi bonds that form they are formed by sideway p orbitals overlap between CN and CC. How is it? So let's say now uh, we try to look at this. Uh, the nitrogen here is has one p orbitals uh, unpaired and one un one unpaired electrons in there, and this carbon also is has uh, uh, one p orbital with one unpaired electron, and this one they can form the pi bond. This carbon also. It has the p orbital one unpaired electron this carbon same therefore it can form pi bond right so the pi bonds form okay will be between cn and cc so p orbitals overlap for the part e pyridine reacts with chlorine in the presence of the aluminum chloride catalyst um, so this one is the uh, electrophilic substitution uh, reaction so we know that the chlorine will substitute one of the hydrogen in the ring and form this product plus HCl so this is similar to the uh, halogenation of the benzene ring so now is uh, telling you mechanism of this reaction similar to the uh, chlorination of benzene using this catalyst and when we use the aluminum chloride uh, as a catalyst together with chlorine so this uh, chlorine can ion will form so this is the electrophile and this is the mechanism that you need to complete so complete the diagram to show mechanism for the reactions of this pyridine with the this uh, chlorine uh, cation so this one you just assume is just like the benzene ring so you need to draw one arrow from benzene ring point to this uh, chlorine ion after that it will form the intermediate uh, this is intermediate make sure you put the curved and the charge positive in there and after that you need to put this ch bond and draw one arrow from ch bond point to point into the ring to show that ch bond break this pair of electrons will move in the benzene ring to restore the benzene ring sorry to restore the uh, pyridine uh, it is not benzene ring huh? to restore the pyridine the the ring structure so after that it will form this um, this uh, product right so um that's all
Thank you.